Hi everyone. Good morning. This is Pastor Dennis, one of the pastors of Victory Davao. And today it's Sunday. Praise God. My hope and prayer that everybody is doing great. And uh, before I'm going to invite you to worship our living God, allow me to read in the scriptures of uh, Ephesians 5.19. It says here, Speaking to one another with psalms, hymns, and songs from the Spirit, sing and make music from your heart to the Lord. Church, this is my prayer. I know that it's very difficult to worship sa tong balay karon, eh, dag distraction. But the Bible, the Word of God clearly says that we will make music from our heart to the Lord. Today, as we worship God, we will make music from our hearts and from our minds. This is my prayer, church, that we will reach upon His throne. And let's pray. Lord, we thank you for this beautiful Sunday that you have given to us. Lord, we thank you for allowing us to worship you. And thank you, God, for you said in your word, O oh God, that we will speak with one another, O oh God, with songs, hymns, O oh God. And Lord, we will make music this morning, O oh God, that coming from our hearts, that you will be glorified and you will be honored, O oh God. Lord, as we worship you this morning, Lord, let your throne, O oh God, be glorified today. Lord, we give all the praise, the glory, the honor, and the power. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Come on, church. Let's worship our living God. Great day, everyone. Welcome to our Sunday worship. What do we start to worship? Praise our living God today, wherever you are right now. Come on, let's worship Him. Oh, love's 
Let us pray. Lord, we thank you, God, for this opportunity to worship you, Lord. That, Lord, we worship you, Lord God, from our hearts, Lord God. Lord, again, salamat sa imong gibuhat, Lord God, for throughout the week, Lord God. Lord, kung sa mga mga challenge na mo, Lord, kung sa mga uh, problems, Lord, I know, Lord, we conquer, oh God, and we defeat it, oh God, because of your name. Lord, today, we choose to worship you. We choose to honor you because we love you so much, O God. Lord, we thank you for the hymns and the songs, O God, that coming from our heart. And Lord, accept our worship before you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Wow, what a wonderful worship that we have, isn't it? Karumbuntaga, let me challenge you in our giving. Allow me to read in Galatians 6, chapter 7 to 8. It says here, don't be misled. You cannot mock the justice of God. You will always harvest what you plant. Those who live only to satisfy their own sinful nature will harvest decay and death from the sinful nature. But those who live to please the Spirit will harvest everlasting life from the Spirit. So this morning, I would like to challenge each and every one of us that why we give this morning. What is the motive of our heart? Unsa mang ato ang tinguha karong adlawa? I hope and my prayer is our giving is a form of worship to God. That we acknowledge that everything belongs to Him. That everything na uh, gikan sa tua is uh, ang ayan lang yun mabalik sa tong ginoong Diyos. Remember this, that as we give to God, wala pa na answered mong prayer, Wala pa na answer dang imuhang gina request kay God. Don't worry about it because in um, in chapter uh, in verse nine it says here. So let's not be uh, get tired of doing what is good. The Bible is telling us do not be get tired of doing what is good because one day he said that at just right the at just the right time we will reap a harvest of blessing if we don't give up. If we don't give up. Surely, God will bless us more. God will give everything that we need according to His richness. Never stop. Church, as we give this morning, I hope and my prayer that our heart is right to Him. And we will not give up in doing what is good. Let me pray for you. Lord, we thank you, Lord God, for everything that you have done in our lives, O God. Lord, as we give this morning, Lord, Lord, it is my prayer, Lord. Na, Lord, you will bless each and everyone's hands to give, O God. Lord, I pray that, Lord, you will not give up, O God, in doing good. You will not give up, O God, in, in doing what is your will. Because someday, Lord God, that, Lord, we will reap this harvest. And, Lord, I pray that those who give, O God, bless their hands, bless the work of their hands, and bless, O God, Everything they have, their family, O oh God, even, O oh God, mga negosyo, even their works, O oh God. Lord, I pray that you will put hedges around their, around their family, Lord God. And Lord, we thank you. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen and amen. There are three ways that we can give sa ang tithes and offering. First is we can do a fund transfer using bank online facility of victory Christian Fellowship of Dabao del Sur Incorporated to our bank no, bank accounts na nakapost below sa tua. And second is you can you can fund transfer by using your PayMaya and GCash account. Just please scan ang ato ang ipost diri na QR code. And the third is you can drop by magpwede tamo ang hidri sa ito ang simbahan along CM Recto and our guards and staff will uh, happily uh, guide you sa itong paghatag diri. even they can pray they could pray for you happy giving everyone happy Sunday everyone God bless
Hello, Victory Davao. Good morning. Welcome to our 10 a.m. online Sunday service. We are glad that you could join us today and for us to worship the Lord together. There is great value in us coming together, whether on-site, physical gathering, or online. We hope that your faith is being strengthened and your passion for the Lord, your love for the Lord, I hope that is growing continuously. Now, uh, we are in our series, The Gospel Expressed. In the past many months, we've been talking about the importance of the gospel, how how the gospel changes us in the life of a believer. And the gospel is the good news which Christ came here for, for us to understand that the life that we are living today, the victory that God has given us, it is possible because of what Christ has done on the cross. And that is the message of the gospel, that everything that we are experiencing here in this world, that is not what determines us, it's not what defines us, but it is what Christ has done on the cross. And as we have experienced this beauty, this power, the majesty, and the, the effect of the cross in our lives, it's not just for us to think about it, it's not just for us to uh, remember the, the, the truth of the gospel, but the gospel has to be expressed. The gospel has to be demonstrated. And the past uh, months, we've been talking about the importance of the gospel. In Romans chapter 1 to 11, basically Paul just teaches us what the gospel is and, 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 and he explains masterfully what the gospel is. Now in Romans chapter 12 to 15, now it simply means that there has to be this effect. That the people around us has to see what the gospel is all about. Now let me read to you Romans chapter 12 verses 9 to 21. And this talks about love in action. And it says here, Let love be genuine. Abhor what is evil, hold fast to what is good. Love one another with brotherly affection. Outdo one another in showing honor. Do not be slothful in zeal, be fervent in spirit. Serve the Lord, rejoice in hope. Be patient in tribulation, be constant in prayer. Contribute to the needs of the saints and seek to show hospitality. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse them. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Weep with those who weep. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be haughty, but associate with the lowly. Never be wise in your own sight. Repay no one evil for evil, but give thought to do what is honorable in the sight of all. If possible, so far as it depends on you, live peaceably with all. Beloved, never avenge yourselves, but leave it to the wrath of God, for it is written, Vengeance is mine. I will repay, says the Lord. To the contrary, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he is thirsty, give him something to drink, for by so doing, you will heap burning coals on his head. Do not overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. Let us pray. Father, I pray, give us understanding today. But more importantly, as we have received, Lord, Jesus Christ in our lives, as we have received, Lord, the message of the gospel, I pray, O oh Lord, that may the gospel change us. Lord, to anyone who has um, heard the gospel, Lord, for, for the past weeks and the past months or even the past years, I pray, O oh Lord, that we will not just be uh, Christians who are settling God um, and, and no change is evident. I pray, Holy Spirit, that you would change us today. Speak to us, O oh Lord, and let love be seen, let love be evident in our lives. Father, we commit to you our time today. In Jesus' name, amen. This week was a great week. We were able to uh, spend time with some friends and some of these young couples that Odi and I have been uh, spending time with. And it's always very interesting how couples are growing in love. Now, all throughout my years of doing counseling and doing ministry, and as we uh, help young couples grow in their marriage, some questions that or some issues that they are actually uh, handling or that they are encountering is how do each other show love? And there are actually times where uh, whether the husband or the wife, they would make so much effort, whether the wife cooks and cleans the house or the husband provides. Yet some of the arguments or some of the issues actually that couples face is that they are not feeling the love from their spouse. Could it be possible for a couple to do things out of love yet the other person does not feel it or cannot feel it 
I realize that there are things that we try to do things out of love, yet the other person, they don't feel it. They are not experiencing the love that we wanted them to feel or experience. In the same way, as Christians, we always say that God is love. And as we have received this love from the Father, a lot of times people don't see this love being translated into our relationships. A lot of times people would say that sometimes Christians are the most judgmental people that they've ever faced or encountered. And all of us, we have to understand that the ultimate expression or the true mark of Christianity is actually love. And this is what Paul was saying or what he was teaching or what he wrote in Romans chapter 12. Now we have to demonstrate and display what this love is. The same love that we have received and experienced from the Father. Now could it be that as Christians we have grown in our knowledge of God in terms of Bible stories, yet we have never truly experienced or even felt this love from God? Alam natin na mahal tayo ng Panginoon. But this love is not just something that we have to know or just uh, tell others, but we have to really experience it from our lives and for us to be able to share it with others. And Paul writes in Romans chapter 12, verse 1, Therefore, in view of God's mercies, now, in view of the mercies of God, this is the very reason why we can love others because we ourselves, we have experienced and received this love of God which is deep and high and long and then this love that is limitless, His love that is unconditional and all of us, we have received this. And as Paul explains the sacrificial love of God, this limitless love of God, this unconditional love of God from Romans chapter 1 to 11, in chapter 12, Paul instructs us that this love must be seen. It has to be very evident to us for every believer. If you are a Christian, it simply means that you are a child of God, loved by God, accepted by God. It simply means that we are no longer defined by our sins. It means that we are now alive in Christ, that the love of the Father has been lavished on us. Paul focused our attention in chapters 1 to 11 on the mercies of God, which provide the basis and motivation for our Christian conduct. Now, in chapters 12 to 15, Paul will describe the kind of behavior which the grace of God enables and expects. As we experience this grace of God, then there is this expectation of how it is to live under the grace of God, the effects of the grace of God. As we receive God's mercies, according to Romans chapter 12, verse 1, our response is to offer ourselves as living sacrifices. Okay? So as we have received the grace of God, we are to offer ourselves, our bodies, as living sacrifices. Now in Romans chapter 12, verse 9, Paul writes there that our love has to be genuine. Now, in the New Testament, the word agape, this love that is unconditional, expresses the highest form of love. And this is the kind of love that God has shown to each one of us. And this is God's commitment to His children. In Romans chapter 5, verse 8, God demonstrated this genuine love, that God demonstrated His own love for us, that while we're still sinners, Christ died for our sins. Imagine that in our worst condition, God showed, God demonstrated His lavish love. Now, verse 9 says that Christians are to pass that love on to others. Now, to love others is to cling to what is good. Not to do so is to give place to selfishness, revenge, and evil. And if we refuse to share this love that God has passed on to us, that God willingly and sacrificially gave to us, then we are being selfish. We are not being Christ-like in serving and loving others. When Paul writes that let love be genuine, let love be sincere, ang ibig sabihin nito is that we are supposed to love without hypocrisy. That we are not supposed to show or demonstrate this fake love. Alam mo yung feeling na kapag kinakausap mo, big, then you change face and like, Hi, kumusta ka? That's not the kind of love that God expects of us. In fact, this kind of love is not of an actor. That you don't force it or you don't act that you are loving. But this kind of love is supposed to be genuine. This love is not cosmetic, something that you put in or you put on when there are people that you're supposed to love. But this love is possible because we have received this love. 
And this kind of love is a kind of love that has weathered storms. This kind of love is perfected as we continue to experience and receive the love and the grace of God in our lives. I realize that in loving, it's difficult to express something that is not real. But the very reason why we can love truly, the very reason why we can love genuinely, is because you and I, we have received this love from God. I want to read to you 1 John chapter 3, verse 1. It says here, See what great love the Father has lavished on us, that we should be called children of God. And that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know Him. The Bible clearly tells us here that we have received this great love from our Father. And I want us to understand today that all of us here, we are not loved by God because of our performance, not because of our good works, not because of our surname or our family name. We are loved by God not because we try to do good or we try to love Him back. We are loved by God because God simply loves us, because He is the God of love, because that is who He is. And no sin can ever separate us from the love of God. In fact, we were loved while we were still sinners. And I love this quote by Bob Deffenbo, and he is a theologian, and this is what he said, Love is the heartfelt affection of the Christian in response to the love God has shown toward us, especially in the gift of salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ. Love is an affection which prompts the Christian to action. Love is first and foremost directed toward God and then toward others. And it is very possible that we as Christians can display this love that God has showed us. Paul writes in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 14 to 15, For the love of Christ controls us, because we have concluded this, that one has died for all, therefore all have died. And he died for all, that those who live might no longer live for themselves, but for him, for their sake, died and was raised. Jesus Christ died on the cross, not just for one, but for all. And therefore, because he died for all, we have become children of God. And now his love controls us. His love compels us. And his love motivates us. And his love uh, drives us to love others in the same way. And this is the main idea of my sermon today. To live as living sacrifices is to live and love like Jesus. Ulitin ko. To live like living sacrifices is to live and love like Jesus. In the same way that we have received the love of God is the same degree that we love others. And for people to see that we have been recipients of the love of Jesus is for us to show this love to others as well. So from the passage that we have read, how can love be put into action? First is this, we have to love God wholeheartedly. The very foundation of our love for others, the very foundation for us to love the people around us is the love of God. And this is the same love that Jesus has portrayed or He has displayed and, and demonstrated to each one of us. Again, the word there is agape, unconditional love. And it says here that we have received this love. So, wholehearted devotion focuses our passion and affection in Jesus alone. This very same love that we have received, we can also in return express and display this love to God first and foremost. In Romans chapter 12, verse 11, in the NIV, Paul writes there, Never be lacking in zeal. Never lack passion in, in serving and loving Jesus. Sabi niya dito, but keep your spiritual fervor serving the Lord. When we talk about spiritual fervor, it talks about our hunger, our thirst for God, our thirst for the Lord. And as we continue to live our lives in this world, we are not defined by how much we volunteer for God, but how much we are growing in our relationship with God. So my prayer is this, now that we have more time in our hands because of this uh, quarantine, my prayer is that we'll continue to grow in our love for the Lord. Do not waste those moments that God has given us. This year, one of the things that God has given us is the gift of time, that we can have more time with God, that we can have more time in solitude with God, spending time with God. I hope as the year ends, we will not miss out 
on those moments with God. I hope and pray that at the end of the year, we will be able to say that, yeah, this year I have grown in my passion for the Lord, that I have grown in my walk with the Lord. Secondly, let us love fellow believers as Christ loved us. Now, this is very important because itong pag-ibig na binigay ni God sa atin, it's not just for us to love ourselves. It has to be translated in loving others. Now, how can we love others? Now, how can we love our fellow brothers and sisters in the Lord? Now, there are certain things that Paul writes here. We need to honor one another and we need to put others ahead of ourselves, irrespective of their socioeconomic status. A lot of times we have biases. And the reality is we have biases. But Paul reminds us to really think about the welfare of others, for us to care about them, for us to display generosity to them, for us to exercise generosity to them. Another thing, Paul instructs us that we need to meet material and external needs, that we have to meet people's spiritual and emotional needs. And this pandemic has revealed a lot of needs. And I want all of us to understand this. Every need is an opportunity for us to share the love of Jesus and to be the hands and feet of Jesus to our brothers and sisters. And I would like to encourage all of us today, take the time to call a friend. Maybe your victory group leader, your victory group member, or yung nakakatabi nyo dati sa church when we had our services here. Take the time to check on them. Because to put love in action or to showcase the love of Jesus to others, we have to love our fellow brothers and sisters as Christ loved us. It has to be selfless and it has to be sacrificial. Thirdly, let us love those who persecute us. This is very interesting because we live in a time where we have a lot of disagreements and our disagreements are not something that we just keep. We post it in social media. And when we don't agree with other people, what do we do? We simply cancel them. We unfollow them. We unfriend them. I realize that canceling others, it is ungodly and it is unbiblical. In fact, Paul writes here that we have to love those who persecute us. Do not curse them. Instead, bless them. In fact, Paul writes here that you need to feed your enemy. And if you're feeling that you have been oppressed instead of taking vengeance, the Bible says, Paul writes here, if you have received the love of Jesus, and I know napakahirap nito, Paul reminds us, do not take vengeance because vengeance is mine, declares the Lord. And my prayer is that we will be able to, as Jesus puts it, love our enemies. I would say that this is one of the most radical teachings that Jesus has taught. But in the same way, this is one teaching that Jesus expects of us. To love our enemies. Tanong ko lang, ilang tao na ang na-unfriend ninyo, ang na-cancel ninyo this year? Some people say that uh, they, ca they have canceled 2020 already. I believe that there are things that God has allowed and God um, permitted so that it will grow us. I hope that this year, as this year ends, patapos na tayo. Magno-November na tayo, uh, a couple of days from now, my prayer is that you have added more relationships, deeper, genuine relationships, instead of canceling them and unfollowing them and unfriending them. My prayer is that you will love people. Paul clearly states here, if possible, as much as possible, live peaceably with others. I pray that there will be harmony in your relationships. The very reason why Paul wrote this is because he understands that as Christians, there are unbelievers around us because the world around us is watching how we live our lives. And the love of Jesus must be evident with how we live our lives. Is there love in our words? Is our actions that are we doing things in a loving way? When our spouse would look at us, can they feel that they are loved? I want to remind every one of us, whether you're married, whether you're single, or you're a student, I pray that you will grow in the love of Jesus. Jesus was rejected, he was crucified, yet he demonstrated the highest expression of love. He died on the cross. He willingly gave himself so that all of us might be reconciled with our Father in heaven. Again, Romans chapter 5, verse 8, 
God demonstrated His own love for us that while we're still sinners, Christ died for our sins. God demonstrated genuine love to the worst of sinners like us, to undeserving people like us. To live as living sacrifices is to live and love like Jesus. I want to read this verse in John 15, verse 9. As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Now remain in my love. The very reason why we can love others is because first we have received the love of the Father through Jesus. Now in the same way, Jesus is telling us, remain in my love. And that is my prayer. Let us remain in the love of Jesus. Today, there are a lot of things that distracts our love for God. There are a lot of things that kills our affection for Jesus. Again, Jesus tells us, remain in my love. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, thank you. Thank you for your amazing love. Thank you, God, for reminding us of how great, how deep, how long, how wide your love is for us. And even as Paul writes, Lord, that nothing in all creation can ever separate us from your love. So Lord, I pray for each one of us today that, Lord, as you have reminded and as you have shown and display your love for us, I pray, God, that may we respond to that love. Give us a deeper understanding of your love. Jesus, we love you. And I pray, O oh Lord, for my brothers and my sisters today. Lord, if there have been times that we have maybe doubted or we have run away from your love, thank you. Because your love is unchanging. No one, God, can snatch us out of your hands and nothing can ever separate us from your love. So Father, I pray for your love, God, to grow in each one's heart. And I pray, Lord, that this love will be expressed, that the people around us will clearly see how great your love is. So Holy Spirit, I pray, may our revelation, may our understanding of the love of Jesus continue to grow in each one's heart. And if you haven't made this decision, to receive Jesus Christ in your life as your Lord and Savior. Maybe you have been doing things for the Lord, but you have never made this decision to make Him in your heart, in your life, as your personal Lord and Savior. Yes, you've been going to church and you have been doing good works, but that is not the very reason why you become a Christian. You become a Christian when you have received Jesus in your life as your Lord and Savior. Not by good works, but by a relationship with Him. I want to give you this opportunity. If you will want to make the decision to receive Jesus in your life as your Lord and Savior, follow after me as I pray. Lord Jesus, thank you because you have shown me what love is. Father, I believe in that love and I believe in what you have done on the cross, that you died for my sins, that you have given me a new life. And Lord, I receive you in my life today as my Lord and Savior. Please forgive me of all my sins. Lord, change me from the inside out. Remind me, God, of how great is your love into my life. Lord, I commit my life to you. I give you my life. In Jesus' name, amen. If you are the person who made that prayer, please do message us. We would want to connect with you and we would want to help you grow in your relationship with God. That's what you call discipleship. And that is what Jesus Christ has called each one of us. Not just for us to be churchgoers or online attendees, but for us to become children of God, for us to be his disciples. So if you are that person, please message us. We would want to connect with you. Again, thank you for joining us today. Thank you for worshiping with us. I just want to close in prayer. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord turn his face upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Lord, we receive your purpose, your blessings, your, the blessing of good health, the blessing, God, of provision. We receive it right now. Thank you for your people. Thank you, God, for our time together of worshiping you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you, everyone, for worshiping with us. Have a great Sunday and have a great week ahead of you. God bless you. See you this Thursday for our prayer meeting at 7 p.m. Thank you, everyone.